In this short video I'm going to be demonstrating the responsive output features um, that are present in Document X and Help Studio. Responsive output adapts to the device profile that's being used to browse the content in order to give your users the best browsing experience on devices such as mobile and tablet. So I'm going to start by demonstrating how you enable the responsive output features in a project either in Document X or Help Studio and then I'm going to demonstrate how the content differs when viewed on a mobile, tablet and desktop device. So I'll just open up one of the sample projects that ships with Document X. Uh, the features are also available in Help Studio for the sample projects that ship with Help Studio. So the place I go in my project to enable the responsive output feature is in the Build Profile Editor on the Templates page. And if I drop down this Features section below each of the templates, I can see that responsive is an option for each of the templates. And if I click one of them, the other templates become automatically enabled for responsive. So that's all I need to do to enable that particular option for my output. If I quickly just switch to the format tab, I'm going to disable compiling a help file because we're looking at browser-based help in this particular demonstration. So if I click now the build button and go ahead and build that output. Now viewed in the browser on my desktop, the uh, content looks exactly the same as the default output with the navigation panel on the left hand side here, the content on the right hand side, I have accordion view on the left hand side to enable me to get to the table of contents index and search and a splitter that can be collapsed away if I want the full screen space for desktop browsing. And the content within the generated pages here is optimized for the desktop browsing experience making maximum use of the screen space available. So I just switched over here to uh, the tablet device to view the same content that we're viewing on the desktop and in this instance it's an iPad that we're viewing this on but the example would be the same on an Android or other tablet device, t other tablet browser. So the content itself looks quite quite similar. Um, we've got some buttonized links here, for example the claps all at the top here and also the links in the see also section down the bottom here to make them easier to hit on a tablet device with the uh, touch. And we've also got this toolbar running across the top of the content that provides access to our navigation bar. So I'm going to go ahead and press the table of contents button in the middle of the toolbar at the top of the page. And we'll see that the table of contents now flies out from the edge of the page so it's not constantly consuming screen space and it's a, a buttonized table of contents so that we can easily find our way through it with touch. So I'm going to drill down to one of the reference pages here through the namespace, down to the classes and I'm going to have a look at one of the class uh, members pages. Okay, so again these uh, links across the top here are automatically buttonized. Um, some of the options are provided larger to make, enable them to be hit easier with a touch device. But the page content remains largely in place where we're making a best use of the available tablet screen space. So on the navigation pane uh, that flies out from the edge here, we've also got the index, which is that second button on the toolbar, and we can scroll through the index contents. Um, we've also got a word wheel where you can start typing in order to find particular items, in. and I can easily navigate to any of the pages in my index results here just by clicking on it. And the navigation pane closes away and I'm, I'm back in the main content. Uh, I've also got a full text search available as it is on the desktop. So in this instance I'm going to search for a particular class. And the search results in the topic that I navigate to are automatically highlighted for me and I can just remove those by clicking that yellow button on the on the toolbar. So if we switch to viewing the same content on a mobile device, in this case it's Android using the default web browser, you can see some more dramatic changes to the layout the documentation to accommodate the smaller form factor. So we've got a reduced uh, sort of title bar at the top of the page here um, and we've got full width buttons for the collapsible sections to make them much easier to hit on a very small screen. Um, but the functionality is all still there so if I click the table of contents button on the toolbar we get the same navigation flyout but this time it's full width rather than the half width on the tablet device. So I use the index to find one of the reference pages. Uh, let's look at one of the members pages. 
and we can see that the uh, layout has adapted to the very limited screen space so we haven't got the wide um, multi-column tables anymore we've got just a simple two column description and uh, member link to make the best use of the available screen space so it's very easy to navigate and to um, find a way through on a mobile device which is the overriding objective here so that concludes a short video demonstrating how you enable responsive output in the document x or help studio project and also how the content adapts to the different form factors on tablet mobile devices with the responsive output option enabled